um, I always have to be ready um, just to move forward in case things happen because here's the truth that um, nothing nothing really goes as planned. Hmm. Mm. Nothing really goes as planned. So uh, you got to be ready for the curveballs. You got to be ready for the different changes up in the pitches. So here we go. So, so before I begin to talk about David, I want to just make uh, what I kind of be talking about tonight also is uh, one I talk about a lot with you guys. I talk about the law of process. I talk about that a lot. And uh, John C. Maxwell, leadership guru, you, I'm pretty sure all you guys know, he talks about this in one of his books, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And law number three is the law of process. And the law of process on leadership is simply as this. He said that leadership... Uh, it leadership doesn't happen in a day. Leaderships leaderships develop daily, not in a day. Mm -hmm. Leadership develops daily, not in a day. And so, as I look at that, that's that's really you can attribute that to like every area of life. Yep. Like nothing just happens, right? Like we hear we hear a lot, like man, that just happened. Well, mm -hmm. nothing just happens. Well, like, like you don't, you wouldn't wake up one day and say, and, and God forbid, I know uh, nobody in here would do this. You wouldn't wake up just one day and say, "Hey, I'm gonna cheat on my wife." Mm -hmm. Like, like something, something got you to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't wake up one day and say, I'm, "I'm gonna kill somebody." Like, something got you to that point. So that just, that just didn't happen that day. It was the days before. It was the weeks before. It was the month before. Mm -hmm. Something happened. To get you to that spot, our seed was planted, our fault was planted, and we begin to water that seed. So nothing, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Yeah. Nothing just happens. So again, uh, leadership develops daily, uh, daily, not in a day. Right. Daily, not in a day. So, um, so, so in that, um, you know, I say that whatever you do consistently, daily, uh, uh, whatever you do consistently on a daily basis will prepare you for any trial in life. Whatever you do daily. One of the things I know about uh, Prophet Watts, every day, every day, every day, he does something with music or he does something uh, catered to his videos that he does. Uh, a motivational or inspirational moment every single day, every single day. Yeah. My wife, my wife, she does something daily concerning fashion every single day. Every single day, not 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 two three days a week, but every single day, every single day, and that's what that's what leaders do. That's what the great do. I mean, they they invest in themselves daily, daily, yeah. daily. Mm -hmm. not not just whenever they feel like it, but even when they don't feel like it. Yes, God. Yes, even yes. when they don't <laughs> feel like it. Even when they don't feel like it. Yes, mm. that's that word. Um. So so uh. Because here's the truth: you won't you won't feel like it every day. You won't be motivated to do it every day. So so naturally, my natural proclivity is I'm an encourager. But you know what? I don't feel like I don't feel like it every day. Mm -hmm. But but once I begin to do it, then it it it, it stirs up the gift in me, mm -hmm. and then it's like I'm okay even when I don't feel like it. But when I begin to exercise my gift, then it's like man, I I feel better because I just encourage somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the same way as you begin to develop your gift and exercise your gift, then it, it stirs up the gift, mm -hmm. and it almost it, it it takes you to another place. It really takes you out of your area or the area that you may be going through, and uh, and and the, and the focus goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, again, the law of process. The law of process. So what you do daily on a, on a consistent daily basis will prepare you for any trial or walk in life. And so that's why we're doing the things that we, we are doing now. You know, the, the leadership training and the, and talking about leaders and the qualities of leaders and some of the things that they displayed. They did that daily. That just didn't, that didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. right. yes. that, that just did, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Uh, and the second thing I want, I'll be uh, kind of talking about uh, tonight is uh, the law of solid ground. When we're talking about leadership, 
And again, you know, we're talking about leadership. This is one of the things that one of the things that leaders always have to do is the leaders always have to uh, go through the law process. And not only the leaders, but everybody. I mean, everybody, everybody is in a process somewhere. Whether you know it or not, everybody is in some type of process somewhere. Yes. Then the second the second thing I'll be talking about is the uh, the law of solid ground. The law of solid ground. And the law of, law of solid ground states that trust is the foundation of leadership. Mm -hmm. Trust is the foundation of leadership. And so as I look at that as well, that's applicable to every part of our, our life as well, especially in relationships. Um, mm -hmm. That trust is the foundation of anything. Anything yeah. Trust is the foundation of a team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. in, any, anything you do when it's concerning people, trust is a, trust is a must. That's the foundation. Mm -hmm. So, so without a strong foundation of trust, uh, then uh, things won't things won't go over as smooth. Mm -hmm. So, I want to do an illustration real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Got a volunteer. Got a volunteer. 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 All right. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. All right. Close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. I need you to walk with me. Close your eyes. Walk with me. So as we talk about the law of solid ground and trust is a must. Mm -hmm. And so I got this chair up here. So I just want you to do something simple. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I want you to sit down in the chair. Good, good. That's the end of the Good, good. And listen, so, so, so here's my point. So I walked her around, right? You guys seen that, and I backed her straight up to the chair. And the only thing she had to do was sit down, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you reach back for the chair? Why did I reach back for the chair? Yes. Be true. Happy. Habit. Yeah, like when you tell somebody to sit down, if I sit down. I'm gonna want to feel what I'm sitting down. Because right? you wanted to make sure it was there, right? Yeah. So, so what does that lead back to? Trust. Trust, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you didn't trust me. She didn't trust the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I didn't trust the chair. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't trust the chair. <laughs> She didn't trust the chair. <laughs> so, so my point is, leadership is the same way. It's the same as that way. If you don't trust the leader, then you will begin to um, just just have to second guess, or or have to when he when he or he or she tells something. I mean, it's almost like you don't you don't believe in it. You got to verify. You got to do all these things. So, trust is the same way. As, as that illustration was right there. And trust, again, is the foundation of leadership. Mm -hmm. And here's the truth. So leaders, organiza organizations, all, all those things today, a lot, a lot of leaders today build on strategy mm -hmm. and ignore character. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. So a lot of leaders today build on strategy and not character. A lot of leaders today build on strategy and they ignore character, ignore the character. And so, and so again, not, and not that strategy is, is not important because we do need strategy, we do need goals, we do need plans, we do need all these things. But if your character is not in play, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if character is not in play, then it's gonna crumble anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, strategies and all this, those things don't matter because what happens is if your character is not right, then people won't trust you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. If character is not in play, then people won't trust you. I know a lot of smart people, a lot of, a lot of st very strategic people and all these things. But when I, sometimes you, and I'm sure you do as well, and sometimes you'll be, you'll say, man, but they, oh, I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. 
I don't trust them. Mm. We know we know one right now that's leading the country, right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> edit that. You got to edit that part right there. It's live. It's right live. There. <laughs> yeah. So 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 we so we look at his character and we said, man, I don't know if I can trust that, right? Mm -hmm. But they're gazillionaires and billionaires. I, but I, I but you know, and so that's how that's how important character is. People can get past a lot of things, but a but a breakdown in your character will taint the trust that people have in you. Mm -hmm. Breakdown in character will do that. But here's a quote. Here's a quote by uh, J.R. Miller. He said that the only thing that walks back from the tomb with the mourners and refuses to be buried is the character of a man. Mm, mm. That's good. So the only thing that walks back from a tomb with the people who are mourning and refuses to be buried is the character of a man. Wow. Yeah. Their character. What a man is survives him. Yeah. Mm. It can never it can never be buried. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. What a man is survives him. It can never be buried. So if that being the case, then we need to we need to make it good, right? Right. Oh, we should. Mm -hmm. We should want to. So, so tonight, so we got that right. We got the law of law of uh, process, the law of solid ground, and John Drinker don't trust me. Oh, <laughs> I don't trust the chair. Girl, we gotta make sure the chair holds. Yeah, yeah. I feel you, Chandra. <laughs> so we got that established. So question for you. So are leaders are uh, so so we probably all all heard this right. Are leaders born or are they made? I think they're both. They're both? Mm -hmm. Why? So it goes back to what Prophet Watt said last week. What did he say? When he said, is per are you born into your purpose? Or are you or do you Walk into your purpose, something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Or do you walk into your purpose? Go before you. You or do you make room for your purpose before you? Yeah. So the thing is, your purpose is already formed before you are born. So if God purposed for you to be a leader, you are born that leader because that's the purpose in which you walk in. But there are times when you are made a leader in certain areas, but still that could be part of your purpose. So, okay. Either way it goes, you are born to be a leader. It just depends on where in leadership you're born to be okay. a leader in. Anybody else? There's no right or wrong. Anybody else? Okay. So my wife said I'm corny, so I'm going I'm to I'm give you my corny answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I say they are, they are, they are born. Because everybody's born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so, <it's> my, <laughs> so, so that's my answer. <laughs> so that's my answer. That was a good one, right? Everybody is. So, so here we go. Here we go. As we start to talk about David, we know that David, the story of David, David comes on the scene uh, in 1 Samuel 16. We know who David was. David was uh, uh, a great king um, in the Old Testament, and his 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 character his character still survives him now, mm -hmm. right? His character, as we look at the, all the greats throughout Scripture, you know the Abrahams and all the great leaders, Moses and all these people, that character still survives them right now. So it's true what he said that the only thing that doesn't die uh, is not buried with refuse to be buried with a man is his character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might as well make it a good one, right? Mm -hmm. So so David comes on the scene in 1 Samuel 16, um, and it, it, it talks about, let me see, let me see, let me see. It says, I'm um, going to start at verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. So, so it says in verse 5, it says, uh, Samuel, I've come to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Get, get yourselves ready to take part in the sacrifice and come with me. Samuel also invited Jesse 
and his sons to come to the sacrifice, and he got them ready to take part. Now, we know uh, Jesse Jesse was David's dad, and David had a ton of brothers. Now, here's, and now, and now in the preceding verses, we know. Is it first Samuel 16? Yes. Right. Yes, First Samuel 16. Okay. And so so we know that, know that story. The preceding verses, we know that King Saul was the king, and and uh, uh, was a nominated king in that time. And so because he was disobedient to the word of God, and God says, hey, my, 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 uh, I'm, not, I'm not with him anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, now uh, we know the story in verse 1, Samuel, he's crying over, over King Saul, and, and God goes to him and says, hey, why are you, a cry why are you crying over him? I've, I've chosen somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Samuel is on, the, on a journey now um, to go anoint the new king. So in verse 6, it says, when, when Jesse and his son arrived, Samuel noticed Jesse's oldest son, Eliel. He, he has to be the one the Lord has chosen, Samuel said to himself. Okay, that's what he said. But here, here's, here's uh, the Lord's reply. But the Lord told him, Samuel, don't think Eliel is the one just because he's tall and handsome. He isn't the one I've chosen. People judge judge others by what they look like but I judge people by what's in their hearts mm -hmm. so Jesse told his son Abinadab to go to Samuel but Samuel said no the Lord hasn't chosen him next Jesse sent his son Shema to him and Samuel said the Lord hasn't chosen him either verse 10 Jesse had all seven of his sons go over to Samuel finally Samuel said Jesse the Lord hasn't chosen any of these young men. Do you have any more sons? Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesse answered. My youngest son, David, is out taking care of the sheep. Send for him, Samuel said. We won't start the ceremony until he gets here. Verse 12, Jesse sent for David. He was a healthy, good-looking boy with a sparkle in his eyes. And, and soon as David came, the Lord told Samuel, he's the one, get up and pour the olive oil on his head. Samuel poured the oil on David's head while the brothers watched. At that moment, the spirit of the Lord took control of David and stayed with him from then on. From then on, Samuel returned home to Ramah. So here, here's, here's the first point, here's the first point. Uh, we see we see back in back in uh, verse back in verse uh, seven where the first the first son comes out Eliab and, and 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 he says Samuel says hey that must be the one that must be the one just because what he looked like mm -hmm. just because of his appearance it says that he was he was tall and handsome mm -hmm. and it, and immediately uh, they begin to say okay that's the one that's the one that's the one that's the one. And as we go on throughout scripture, that it said that no, that people judge by the outer appearance, but God judges by the heart. Mm -hmm. So so the first thing I want to say about David being the leader that he was, that obviously that his, he, his heart must be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, and, 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 I, and, and we can just make reference to that because of what scripture said. It said, the scripture says that, that uh, the other ones that 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 the Lord choose people because of their heart. Yeah. So the other brothers must have had something in their heart that the Lord didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. They must have had something in their heart that the Lord didn't agree with. Yeah. And so soon as David comes on the scene, as soon as it says that as soon as <laughs> as soon as Samuel saw him, mm -hmm. the Lord said, "That's the one. Anoint him. Put all over his head." Mm -hmm. So, so, so my point, my point is, my, one of my point, one of my point is this, that as a leader, not, not perfection, yeah. not perfection, mm -hmm. because we, none of us are perfect, because we were then, Jesus came for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so my point is that it has to be purity. Your motives, your motives have to be pure. Motives have to be pure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your motives have to be pure in heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's one of the things that, that this scripture that this scripture was making reference to, that he knew that the other brothers, and, and as you go on throughout scripture, uh, through the book of Samuel, you'll see how the brothers 
They, they were. They had a little jealousy in their heart. They had some other things going on in their heart. So, so their motives was, was not right. Mm -hmm. They had bad motives in their heart. And it says that as soon as David stepped on the scene, they said, that's the one. That's the one. Yep. That is the one. That is the one. So, so, so first thing as leaders that your motives, the motives in your heart have to be right. Mm -hmm. Your motives have to be right. Because anything else is going to taint your character. Yeah. And if your character is tainted, you eventually lose trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if people don't trust you, they won't follow you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if people are not following you, then you're not leading. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're simply taking a walk. That's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, simply taking it a walk. Taking a walk. Simply taking a walk. <laughs> yeah. If people if people are not following you, then you are not leading. You are simply taking a, a walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, your motives have to be pure. Not not perfect. I mean, because we're gonna miss it in some things. Right. We're gonna miss it. And so again, if your motives are off, your motives are not pure. Motives are manipulative. Mm -hmm. Your motives are deceitful. Mm -hmm. Then that taints your character. Mm -hmm. And if your character is tainted, then you lose trust. Yeah. And if people don't trust you, they won't follow you. And again, if, if you think you're leading and people are not following, you're simply taking the walk. So, so in verse 14, it goes on to talk. They said, the spirit of the Lord left Saul and the evil spirit of the Lord was terrifying him. Um, it says, an evil spirit from, the, from God that's frightening you. Uh, Saul's official told him, your majesty, let us go for uh, someone who is good at playing the harp. He can play for whatever the evil spirit, whatever the evil spirit uh, from God bothers you and you will feel better. All right, Saul answered, find me someone who is good at playing the harp and bring him here. A man named Jesse lives in Bethlehem. He has a son who, who can play the harp. An official said he's a brave warrior. He's good looking. He can speak well, and the Lord is with him. So that's, my, that's one of my second points there. It says the Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. We seen earlier that it said that the that the spirit of the Lord uh, left Saul and went to David. Mm. It took control of David, and it said it stayed with him from then on. Mm. It stayed with him from then on. So, so my second point is that if if you are, are, are a good leader and you're doing it God's way, you always have uh, uh, the, the 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 driving force, the spirit of God with you always he will yeah. always back you mm -hmm. i mean script i mean as, as as we move forward in this you'll see how the spirit of, of god was with david so much it says that david won every battle that he fought yeah. Yeah. and david was a fighting man mm -hmm. he didn't fight one or two wars he fought all the time yeah. i mean that's why i said that he couldn't even build build uh the house of god yeah. because he had too much blood on his hand mm -hmm. So, so uh, in order to do that, I mean, it was not David wasn't that special, but the one that was with him was. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, that's what made him so successful in war because he had a mighty God backing him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so when 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 you a leader and you're doing it and your motives are pure and you're doing it God's way, God will always back that up. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he will always back it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. He will always back it up. But God loves you so much as well that he'll let you do it your way. Mm -hmm. He'll let you do it your way. So he also as we as we move forward, it says uh, Saul sent a message in verse nineteen. It says Saul sent a message to David. Tell your son David to leave your sheep and come here to me. Verse twenty says Jesse loaded a donkey with bread and goat skin full of wine. Different. 
and a young goat was sent to him by his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. Mm -hmm. He has found favor in my sight. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing it God's way, you'll find favor in his sight. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that favor is better? The favor of God is, is better than money. Yep. Yes. The favor yes. of God is better than money. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong. You can get some, well, I want some greeny green green too. But the faith, if you have the favor of God, that brings all that stuff. Yes, yes. Right? The favor of God will bring you things that money can't buy. Yes. Yeah. That's the favor of God. And so it says, and so on. Whenever the spirit of God, whenever the, whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. So here's another principle when you are a great leader. When chaos is going on, when things are falling apart, yeah. when, 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 when trials are coming like this, the leader has to, has to be one to step up and, and just bring about a peace. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The leader has to leader. be the one that, 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 that speak a word that calm, calms the storms. Yeah. Mm. He, has, he has to be the one that relieves the, the stress from, from the people. Yeah. From the ones who are going through something. Peacemakers. Mm -hmm. He's the peacemaker. A good leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the book of Matthew says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. but, but a lot of times we try and be keepers. peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. But here's the truth in order to have peace, you first have to make peace. Yeah, make and first, in order to have peace, you got to make peace. Yeah. You have to make it. Yeah. And that's uncomfortable a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, David was a great leader and, one, and, and, and because he was anointed during times of chaos, during distressing times because he brought about stability. He brought about peace during those chaotic times. When those evil spirits, you, you, when those evil spirits come in talking to the people sometimes, I mean, whispering and, and saying things that con that's contrary to the vision of your house, proper watts, or, or, or whatever, if it doesn't line up, then the leader has to be the, has to be the one to step up and bring about a peace yep. that brings about clarity, that brings about understanding, yes. and get people back on the right track. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it says that whenever whenever David played the the harp, that it brought about a it brought about a peace. Mm -hmm. It brought it brought uh, put King Saul back in a back in a peaceful place. Brought it back into a peaceful place. So as so as we know that in the in in the uh, first chapter also when David was when David was introduced it says that when all the other sons were were uh, out you know walking before Samuel and he said that hey that's not him that's not him it says that David was in the back tending to the sheep mm -hmm. he was in the back tending to the sheep. So sometimes, sometimes uh, I'm doing 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 leadership. It has to be a time of preparation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always has to be a time of preparation. Well, you may be in the back of the room, or in the back of the house, mm -hmm. on the back side of the mountain, like Moses was being prepared, yeah. and nobody sees you. Yes. Nobody don't even they don't even know your name. Yeah. Right. Matter of fact, you may be like Samuel. You might not even know they back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Don't even know you exist. Right. But as a great leader, there always has to be a time of preparation, a season of preparation. Oh. Always has to be a season. So when you meet up, when you meet up with the opportunity, then you'll be ready for it. Mm -hmm. So, so as 
as David was, was in the tending to the sheep, and some of you may be in a process right now, some of you may be in a preparation stage right now, you just tended to the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. We just tended to the sheep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a good place. Right. Because it was, it was in that place, it was in that place of his time of preparation when he was tending to the sheep that prepared him yeah. for his the, the biggest one of the biggest opportunities of his yes. life. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. That prepared him for one of the biggest opportunities of his life. Yep. Just because he was in the back of the yard, nobody seen him, nobody knew him. Clothes probably dirty. He would he wouldn't he wasn't dressed up like the other guys were. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew his name, but he was being prepared at the same time. So he was in his season of preparation. So so I said all that to say this. Just because you may be in your season of preparation, nobody may not know your name right now. Mm -hmm. They might not even know you exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God is preparing you for what he has prepared for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what he was doing to David when mm -hmm. he had David back there tending to the sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one thing that he was doing was... When, when, when David was tending to the sheep, he actually he actually was learning how to lead sheep. Because mm -hmm. David would That's be the good. one that would lead me into victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he was back there tending to the sheep, he was learning how to lead the sheep as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 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 as you move forward, I mean where, where you are, God is not a wasteful God. Mm -hmm. Nothing that you are going through is 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 wasteful. We may look at it like, David could have looked at it like, hey, my brother's up there doing all these things. Don't back here tending to some sheep, doing all these things. But God was preparing him to do something great. Mm -hmm. So don't be too quick to count your frustrations. Mm -hmm. Don't be so quick to count your frustrations. So, so again, so when they was back there tending to the sheep, you guys know the story that as we move forward, that that uh, uh, when 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 uh, he 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 tells King Saul, he learned. Hey, listen, he learned how to fight bears and tigers and all these things. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, scripture says that he says when when uh, when when one of the sheep when uh, when was it the lion or the bear caught the sheep? He said he went to seize it. Yep. So he says he so Dave, hey, check this out. Dave was gonna let it live at first. He said when he went to seize the sheep, mm -hmm. and he said, and then uh the, the, the lion turns on him, he grabs him and kills him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just because of he was his time of preparation in the backside, mm -hmm. while nobody was seeing nobody him. Nobody was seeing him. Nobody knew his name. Mm -hmm. no. That God was preparing him for something at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That when he met up with his opportunity would be one of the biggest opportunities of his life. Yes. Yes, yes God. God. One of the biggest opportunities of his life. So here's one, here's another thing you gotta realize as well. That because if uh, David understood that it was nothing special about him, but because of the God that was in him, the God that had was on him, he realized that it wasn't him that was going to be fighting mm -hmm. Goliath. He realized that it was nothing special about him. He, it wasn't him that was able to kill the lions and the bears and all these and all these things, but it was because he had a driving force. He had God backing him up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's what that's what that's one of the qualities of great leaders as well. It's, I mean, now a, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them will come to a point where they pull their pants up and stick their chest out like it's all them. Mm -hmm. But it's never it's never them. That's right. So here's another point I want to make that David had to be walking in total humility. Total humility. He had to be walking in humility. Proverbs three thirty four, James four six, Peter five and five. 
talks about how God gives grace to the humble. Yes. It says he gives more grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. And that's what that's what that's what David was walking in. He was walking in humility, so God was able to add to him grace and more grace and more grace and more grace for every situation. I mean, he was he was tending to the sheep. While again, while his other brothers was doing all these great things. But he was back there just tending to the sheep. And it's in that place that God gave that he humbled himself and God added grace to him to be able to you know, uh, kill the lions and, and kill all these animals. And then also eventually kill a Goliath. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. To be able to kill a Goliath. So as we look at also when um, when David had to uh, go out and and, and, and and fight Goliath. One of the things that he talked about was, you know, he, he, he tells Goliath, he says, hey, you, 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 you come, basically, <laughs> he basically tells, hey, you, you, you come, you come to a gunfight with a knife. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bring a knife to a gunfight. So that's basically what he tells Goliath. He said, you, you, you defy the armies of the living God. Mm -hmm. And then David goes on to tell him that God is going to give his, his, will give you into my hands. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't go to him and say, I'm going to do this to you. He said, God, wow, yeah. God, yeah. Mm -hmm. God is going to, has given you into my hands. Mm -hmm. Then I'm a king and I'm going to cut your head off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. With your soul. Scripture says that David David tells him that he's going to cut his head off and he didn't even have a sword. Yeah, have a sword. Mm. Yeah. He didn't even have a sword. But as the beginning, as I told you, that David was able to do all these things because Scripture says that the Spirit of God was upon him from then on. From then on. From then on. That's what it says. From then on. And as a, as a good leader, if your motives are pure, your motives are right, all these things, then God is backing you up. Yes. But if your motives are unpure, if your motives are manipulative, if your motives are not right, then character is tainted. And if your character is tainted, then you lose trust of the people. If you lose trust of the people, then they won't follow you. So also as we see, as, as we move forward, we see how uh, after 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 David after David uh, defeats Goliath, we see that uh, um, one of the things that happened is Saul Saul becomes jealous of David, and so now David is on the run. You got to understand all this as well. David was it said he was about a set, he was about seventeen when he was anointed to be king. Yeah, seventeen, but he didn't but he didn't but he didn't rule till he was thirty. Yeah. Didn't mm -hmm. rule till he was thirty. It's like I was talking about earlier. Is that is that is that process? Process. That that the law of process. The law and, and we talked about a Sunday. It said uh, where where you are and the promise of God is always conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always this is always conflict here. You guys know the story of David. You talk about conflict. You talk about thir 13 years of conflict. It says that half the time, half the time he was on the run, mm -hmm. living in caves, mm -hmm. hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of most of the book of Psalms is 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 him singing songs unto the Lord. But most of the time he wrote it, he was in caves. He was living in caves. He was on the run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Living in caves and on the run. So in saying that, one of the great qualities of David and any leader is that your trust can't be in you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your trust can't be in you. Mm -hmm. 
Your trust can't be in you. As we look at the life of David, I mean, uh, that he knew that his trust wasn't in him. I mean, I, we just talked about when he told Goliath, he said that, that God has given you into my hand. Mm -hmm. He knew that wasn't about him. Mm -hmm. But that was God who was the one that was going to do all that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the story of Ziklag, you guys are familiar with that story when David then went right. out to war and, and, uh, and they came back and uh, the, the one of the other enemies had taken all the women and the children and it says that the men want to stone David and do all these things. It says that he goes to the, he cries and he encourages himself and he goes to the Lord and asks him what he should do and the Lord says pursue, 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 pursue. So his, his trust wasn't in him but it was, in, it was in the Lord. So a good leader will always have, or, or his, his trust won't be in him. That's right. mm -hmm. But it will be in the one who allowed him to be in that, in that position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get away from that, then yeah, scripture says that God gives grace to the humble, but the pride brings to he brings to a low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a law. Mm -hmm. That's a law. Yeah. That's a law. God hates pride. And anytime you are acting, anytime you are doing things outside the will of God, it boils, it all boils that point back to pride. Yes, Any, yeah. Anytime that you're doing anything outside the will of God, it all points back to pride because you're basically saying that I can, my way is better than your way. Yeah. I, I, hey, I, I got this, God. I got this. That my way is better than yours. You don't know what you're doing. Mm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I tell you guys, I told you guys before that we look at we look at pride as thinking too highly of ourselves, but pride, pride also is is centered in uh, uh, low self esteem and thinking too low of yourself because you're in the center. Yeah. God is not in the center, mm -hmm. so so it has to be that 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 perfect balance, and that perfect balance balance is doing it doing it God's way, yeah. and not your way. Because Amen. if you're doing it your way, then you're acting in pride, you're moving in pride, and so that's what happened to King Saul. King yeah. Saul, King Saul began to do things in his way, yeah. mm -hmm. and God says, "I I hate I hate that I've made him king, mm -hmm. right?" Mm -hmm. And so and so, but when you act, when you walk in humility, He says He will grace that. He'll always grace that. Yes, God. But when you walk outside of that, then you're doing it your way. And that's called pride. Again, mm -hmm. because you're saying, hey, God, I, I, I know this. I, I know things it, better than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Isaiah 55 says. I don't care about you mm -hmm. saying that your ways are higher than mine and all these kind of things that, you know. Uh, so, so we have to be careful of that because God will always, always deal with with pride. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, God. He will always deal with pride. So again, guys, I told y'all wasn't gonna be before you long. We talked, I mean, a couple things I do want to reiterate is, you know, we talked about the law of process, the law of process. We talked about uh the law of solid ground. And I think I believe that that's really an important one. The law of process talks about, uh, from a leadership perspective, talks about leaderships develop daily, not in a day. Mm -hmm. Again, all of us are in a process somewhere, somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. and so we have to do things daily. We have to work on the vision daily. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, work on the goals daily. Mm -hmm. Whatever God has called us to, we have to work on it daily. Whatever you've been gifted to do, you got to do it daily. Yeah. Because um, if if we don't, then we can never de fully develop into what God has called us to do. So I just want to encourage you: whatever God has called you to do, the law process. I mean, it, it's it's not it's not you know, it's not going to always be fun, mm -hmm. but it's right. necessary. Yeah. You know? God's God has to make sure that as we move forward in the process, that we have to be uh, mature. Mm -hmm. yeah. And ready for the promise that he has for us. Because yeah. God is never going to give us the, nothing that we're not ready for. Mm -hmm. Because he would be a dysfunctional God. And he's not a dysfunctional God. He's a God of order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, God. So we, again, we have to embrace our now so we can have our next. Mm -hmm. Embrace our now so you can get to the next. Yeah. You got to embrace your now so you can get to the next. Mm-hmm. 
And again, I want you guys to remember this as well. I, I, I said it earlier that um, as, as leaders now, we can't get so caught up in just strategy, just mm -hmm. strategy. I, I talked about earlier how a lot, of, a lot of things are being built now on strategy and not trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it won't last. Won't last. One of one of my favorite uh, uh, scriptures uh, that David talks about in Psalm it says that scripture it says that David David led the people with integrity of heart and skillful hands. Mm -hmm. Integrity of heart and skillful hands. Mm -hmm. I almost read that scripture every single day because I know that's a charge that uh, as a leader that God has not only on me but all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Uh, you, it has to have both. You can have you can have skillful hands and not walk in integrity, but you won't have the trust of the people. Right, right. And if the people don't trust you, they won't follow you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if people not follow you, you're you just taking a walk. You just taking a walk. Yeah, <laughs> you're just taking a walk. <laughs> but on the other hand, you could be walking in integrity. And not have skillful hands, mm -hmm. not help develop people, yeah. not help pour the people, and you still can be off. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Still can be off. You can be a great person, mm -hmm. amazing person. Yep. But if you if you if you don't have skillful hands, then it's still an imbalance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Still an imbalance. But it says that David led them in integrity of heart and skill and, skill. and with skillful hands. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with skillful hands. Mm -hmm. And with skillful hands. That's why it's important that uh, we have to be the people who God called us to be, but also cultivating our gifts at the same time. Mm -hmm. it's at the same time. Do it in an excellent because it's going to call for both. Yes. It's going to call for both. Yes, God. If you don't have skillful hands, you better surround yourself with somebody who do. <laughs> but surround yourself with people who do alright guys that's all I got questions, comments